teacher as my bio shows and my handouts. Uh, and for the last five or six years, I've actually been a minister. I've been ministering to four people in Wyeth, and uh, that and a member of another ministry, that's been my occupation. And I collect rent on a couple of properties that I have. That's how I'm making my living. What happened to me that put me behind this mic is that I could no longer sit at home and watch money being spent that I didn't think was justified. Uh, I pay about $12,000 a year in property taxes. And I see no end in how much they want to tax us. I talked to one individual who shall remain nameless, and I said, don't you ever see that when the economy is not doing well, that maybe you should hold off, and if the rest of us are having to tighten our belt, that maybe you should tighten your belt, and if most of El Paso ones are having to live on five or 10% less, then maybe you should try to live on five or 10% less? And his answer was almost verbatim, so long as there's cost of living increases, we see a way to raise taxes. And that just breaks my heart because I see people coming back as I go to City Hall like I do every Tuesday. I see these elderly people coming out of City Hall paying their taxes late from last year. And it breaks my heart. These are elderly people on a fixed income. And, and I just, with the latest thing, computer chips in the, in the trash cans and uh, bike paths that seem to have no end and now uh, sidewalks for every street in El Paso that may or may not have traffic. Uh, there's just no end. And, uh, I, like, I liken it to my teenage daughter when she had a credit card. She didn't seem to understand the concept of a limit. She thought that so long as daddy was alive, there was gonna be a 10% increase on her income or more. So that's, that's what, the main reason I'm there. Um, there's other things that have been going on. I'm, I, I make no secret that I'm a minister and I have certain values that I try to adhere to. That doesn't make me better than people. It just means that I believe somebody has to stand up for certain values that most El Paso ones believe in. And because of that, I decided to go up there and try to represent the city in a way that I believe people want to represent it. Um, beyond that, uh, I also will say this. I see a tidal wave, an economic tidal wave coming, like a tsunami. And I think if we don't have people who are fiscally responsible back there, we're going to suffer like Wisconsin, Indiana, and other parts of the country. So I believe in getting ready so we can survive that. Thank you very much. Labor unions, like any other organizations, become a negative factor when they are taking or enforcing or demanding more benefits than the average El Paso. That's my opinion. When we have somebody who is demanding certain benefits, and we see that the majority of El Pasoans are hurting, as I said earlier, economically, and they insist on those benefits, regardless of what's happening in the economy, I think that's when we need to revisit um, their, their strength, their position, and their benefits. Sir, given your uh, professional background, and you've been in this question, City Council has voted to extend benefits to domestic partners of city employees. How would you have voted and why? I cannot deny because I'm on record as having been part of that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was having a Bible study the day I was invited to participate in that particular issue uh, by my pastor. I hesitated to go because I didn't see that as anything that I wanted to get involved with. But I did go out of just obedience to my mentor and my pastor. And when I got there, I realized that Unfortunately, well, first of all, I was, I was in favor of traditional family values, and I still am. Unfortunately, that has been translated as being anti-gay, and that has been translated as being a negative or being against someone. Uh, I wish we could see that because we fight for a certain value, in this case marriage, and, and even the federal government, the state government, at every level for 200 years, we have given certain cred credibility and certain benefits, if you will, certain uh, privileges to people who form a union. And just because we don't want to get those benefits or take or, or, or bring that to a different level, that doesn't mean we're against people. It just means we want to preserve what, what is valuable to our society, which is marriage. That, and, and again, that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with other people. It means we have to preserve what is valuable for our society. How, I didn't hear, how would you have voted on that? I voted in favor of traditional family values. No, there was an issue before city council, and the question was, how would you have voted when it was presented to city council, had you been on council at the time? Well, yes. it was, it's been presented many different ways. Which one are you talking about? It's been going on for a year. 
there are certain ones that you would have voted differently than others? The, 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 are you talking about how I would have voted to give benefits to non-married couples? Yes. yes. I voted against it. Okay. Mr. what is your position on the following transportation issues? The extension of Red Road? Kind of similar to this Arizona 1070 bill. Do you agree or disagree with this perspective or this, if it was passed? You know, uh, I've been tossing this back and forth in my mind because I know as private citizens, we're allowed to have a citizen's arrest, right? So I've always wondered if a private citizen can, can, can arrest someone when they see a crime being committed. It seems to me that the police can also uh, go into an area that may not be defined particularly for them. However, this is the however with a capital H. I just read uh, some information where our jails are so full, I think it's 1 to 48 uh, as far as the guard for inmate. Our, our jails are so full as it is right now that I am not at this time in favor of having policemen go into that area. Does, does that answer, is that clear enough for you? I'm not in favor of having policemen uh, do the work of the immigration. I don't know how you formulated your question, but I'm not in favor of having the El Paso police trying to enforce immigration laws. Just a quick question. Do you believe an individual is born homosexual or chooses to be homosexual? <laughs> I think, hey, I'll take it. That's one of the tough ones, and I'll take it. Um, I believe, according to my faith, that all of us are born sinners. All of us are born with proclivities to sin, no matter what, whether it be fornication, steaming, lying, or whatever. And that all of us need the same solution. There is one solution and one solution only, and that is to be born again of the Spirit of God through faith. And that applies for homosexuals, heterosexuals, multisexuals, omnisexuals, any kind. I didn't answer the question. Do you support or oppose the expanded, expanded use of solar energy? Why or why not? And what ideas do you have to expand the use of I, I, I surrender to his definition, you know. Um, he very well established one man, one woman, and even though the people who have breakups and divorces and things, uh, I would not judge them or wish any ill upon them. Nevertheless, I think we should have the goal, we should have the aspiration, we should have the standard of trying to have uh, a, a one man, one woman ho uh, household, because studies have already shown, be beyond myself, beyond what little I know, studies have already proven that the children grow up healthier, there's less crime in that family. It's just a healthier, healthier home, which makes a healthier community, which makes a healthier city, if we promote things that have to do with a, a uh, traditional family. What is your position on expanding affordable housing for the disabled? Expanding it? Yes. Affordable housing for the disabled. The last time I checked, um, the Federal uh, regulations or uh, requiring those two percent of housing to fit that particular belt in the city. And in some instances, people look to increase revenues. One of our questions we we asked prior was, "What is your position on imposing an excise tax on sugar sweetened drinks?" Excise tax. <laughs> Well, you know, that brings up the whole question of how much government do you want in your life, you know? On the one hand, we all have benevolent thoughts. On the one hand, I, I, uh, I would love to go to school uh, once, once a day or once a week and volunteer to tell little Johnny, for example, not to get two or three chocolate milks and throw them all in the trash can. I wish the, the lady there would at least say, finish that milk before you throw it away, because EPISD is on their way to raise our taxes also, by the way. And a lot of that is waste, waste, waste. Getting back to what you specifically, how much should government be telling us what to eat and what not to eat? I think when it comes to our children and schools, we certainly don't want to encourage bad, bad food or bad nutrition. And I would be in favor of, of having only healthy, healthy foods available. But to make it something that extends to, to the adults, I would not be in favor of having government trying to uh, impose on adults uh, a, a particular diet. No. Well, the question was imposing not a diet, but a tax. Oh, a tax on that for the schools or citywide? Uh, citywide. Citywide, a tax on... Uh, Sugar, sweet, and drink. Um, hmm. so I, I think if, if our budget demands some kind of increase, that would be something we could look at. 
Let me ask you, what is your perspective on consolidating seating? How many? Two minutes. Okay. Um, I just want to thank you. You know, these are difficult times for all of us, and I'm not an expert at being up here. If you had asked me six months ago uh, if that I was going to be up here, I would have laughed at you. I wouldn't have believed it either. But there comes a point in our lives where staying at home becomes more painful than getting involved. And every time I step behind a mic like this or in front of people, I just ask myself, will I be able to, at the end of my life, look in the mirror and say, did you do your best? Did you try to help or did you just criticize? And I can't stay home and, and just criticize and complain. I have to offer what I have to offer, little or big, but whatever I have to offer, um, big or small contribution, whatever I have, I have to put it on the table and let God and the people of El Paso decide if I can be a benefit to this city. Thank you very much.